Hello, 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 and welcome to Woman to Woman with Lady Aisha Fisher. So happy to have you join me on today. We are going to continue with our family breakthrough devotionals, our family breakthrough devotionals, and they can be found on the YouTube page um, under the playlist Family Breakthrough Devotionals. Amen. And so today we're going to discuss debt. What does the Bible say about debt? What does the Bible say about debt? Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I thank you for you are so worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for your loving, your kindness, your grace, and your mercy, for loving us in spite of us, for fearfully and wonderfully creating us in your image to do great things for your kingdom. I ask that you would remove any and everything that's not like you from our heart, mind, body, and soul that would prevent us from coming before you with clean hands and a pure heart that we can position ourselves to receive clarity, revelation, and understanding in your word that we can use in our lives, relate to others, and recall to memory when need be. Um, have your way in our time together that we can use it, this information we, we discuss today and learn today to have a more positive impact in our realm of influence. Thank you for choosing us, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we are going to start today with some words of encouragement, some words of encouragement. And this um, devotional is adapted from, adapted by the Holy Spirit um, to me, adapted from um, daily decrees for family blessings and breakthrough. Okay. So here are some words of encouragement. The majority of debt most people carry is created due to poor spending habits. However, there is debt that people sometimes incur, incur that is truly out of their control. For example, a large unexpected repair or medical bill may create a debt situation. Debt can be stressful and put a tremendous weight on people's finances. Descending into debt is something we know we should avoid, but we also know God can and often does supernaturally intervene and cancel debt. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we need to have faith for that. We need to have faith for that. Amen. Many believers have experienced bills being paid off in supernatural ways that only the Lord could have accomplished. Whether the debt you are facing was self-created or out of your control, ask your heavenly father to help you get out of debt, both through your natural efforts, say through my natural efforts, right? And by supernatural help and power from the Lord. Amen. Remember, we serve a loving and gracious God who wants to help us. Live your life in faith that you can be free from debt. By declaring a debt-free lifestyle over you and your family, you will create the consciousness to avoid debt and build your faith for the Lord to deliver you from debt. I like that. It says you will create a the consciousness. You will create the consciousness, the intentionality to avoid debt and to build your faith for the Lord to deliver you from your debt, both now and in the future. Declare debt cancellation in Jesus' name, Amen. And we will um, do some do some declarations at the end of this, Amen. And I forgot to do um, the declaration on the last devotional that we did, um, and I do apologize for that. But the amount of scriptures we had was was surely enough um, when we were talking about our um, our financial provision and increase in that last devotional, Amen. Glory to God. Uh, so we are going to, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to read a definition from the Bible, from a Bible dictionary about debt. And then I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures and then we're going to do our, um, our decree and de declaration and decree. Amen. And so it says the definition of debt, it says borrow money or property that a person is bound by law to pay back to another. In all periods of history, people have always had to borrow money. In Bible times, many were willing to lend the desired money, but at a price. Somebody say, at a price. Hallelujah. Excessive interest rates of 50% or higher per year were often charged. That is sad. But <laughs> this is what happens. Amen. It says, except, I was surprised to read that. I really was excessive rate, excessive interest rates of 50% or higher per year were often charged. Moses admonished the Israelites to give help to their own people without charging any interest. 
However, they were allowed to charge interest to foreigners. When a loan was made, something was usually put up for collateral to guarantee that debtors would pay their debt. The creditor did not have the right, did not have the right forcefully to enter the debtor's house and claim the collateral. He was required to wait outside until the debtor brought out the pledge and presented it to him before witnesses. Essential objects that were necessary to sustain life, such as the millstone that back in those days, um, they, they had livestock and they did farming and everything. And that's how they gained their money could not take, could not be taken as a pledge. Outer cloak, which was essential for warmth to the poor during cold nights, could not be kept as a pledge. Occasionally, debtors would give a child or slave as a pledge for debt. That that surprised me too, that, that people actually offered up their children as collateral. That That's sad. I'm not surprised about the slaves, but the ch your child, that's an example of how debt is a bondage. Amen. Sometimes a family member or a friend would guarantee the pledge for another. The Mosaic law also provided for the sabbatical year every seventh year and the year of Jubilee every 50th year. These were times of release when debts were to be forgiven and all pledges returned. Christ emphasized the need for all people to show love and grace toward their fellow human beings. He taught us to pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Somebody say that. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. God has offered his grace in the form of his son to pay the price for our debts. Somebody put, put your hand, not somebody, put your hand, if you're listening to this, put your hand on your chest and say, and say, um, God offered his son, Jesus, in the form of his son, Jesus, to pay the price of my debt. We have to make things personal, especially when it relates to the word of God, when it relates to, to God and Jesus and his instructions. We have to make it personal because it, it helps us um, if you have a pure heart, <laughs> if you desire to have a pure heart, it helps us to take it in and to really digest that. Amen. Out of gratitude, we should show that love to others also. Amen. And so now we're going to dive into some scriptures as I move my stuff around here. We're going to dive into some scriptures, okay? And um, I encourage you to get a pen, something to write with. If you have your phone, take notes in there because there are some, um, a couple here for you to, to take. And I apologize for not saying that at the beginning. That's why I'm kind of stalling a little bit to give you time um, to do that. Either get something to write on your notepad, your note, your notebook, or uh, open up your phone and your notes. I've been doing that lately, taking a lot, a lot of notes in my phone. It's very helpful because I, I misplace <laughs> notebooks. I got so many notebooks. Amen. All right. So our first scripture is Romans chapter 13, verse eight. Most The majority of these scriptures will be read in the Amplified Bible. I believe there is one, possibly two, that is in another translation. And I will try to make sure to bring that to your attention. Actually, I see that there's really only one. So everything else is in the Amplified. It says, owe nothing to anyone except to love and seek the best for uh, for one another. For he who unselfishly loves his neighbor has fulfilled the essence of the law relating to one's fellow man. Right. And so this is encouraging us. We really should know uh, owe nothing. Right. To anyone except love. Why? Because love is is is, is a requirement for everybody. Everybody is is made in the in the image of God and they are humanity and humanity is to be respected and loved. We owe that to humanity. We owe that to humanity to love them as a human being. Glory to God. That is the only thing, amen, that that we should owe to someone is to love them. And to the, and, and you can't do that um appropriately effectively um without the love of God. And that requires knowing God, having a relationship with God. Amen. Um, and the next scripture is Proverbs chapter three, verse nine. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first produce of your entire harvest. So this here positions you. We talked about in, when we were our, our last devotional about financial uh, provision and increase, we talked about being properly positioned. That's the key 
right? And so how do we proper, properly position ourselves? We, we do that by obeying the word of God and honoring the Lord with everything, right? Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first produce of your entire harvest. I use it. That's not the translation I was supposed to be using. I was going to say, I used a different one that said a different something else. I apologize. That was the Christian standard Bible, but I was looking for the amplified. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your income. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your income, right? Honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruits of all your income. So that's above and beyond your tithe. That's above and beyond your, your, um, your giving. We need to honor, show the, our appreciation to God with our wealth. And when we do that, it positions us um, to stay out of debt. It positions us to stay out of debt. The next one, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12, it says, the Lord will open for you his good treasure house, the heavens to give rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. And you will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. Okay. This is uh, old Testament. So again, we're talking about back in those times, they bartered with, with, with grains, with things that they grew and with animals. Okay. And so it was a treasure <laughs> when God opened up the heavens. Um, it was a blessing because they needed that water that from heaven to, in order to grow their crops and, and keep their animals healthy and, and things. But it says the key that I'm pointing, I just wanted to clarify that. But the key here says that you will be, you will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. It is God's desire for us to be the lender. It is also God's desire for us to not be the borrower. It is God's desire that we do not borrow, that we do not get in debt. And we have to understand that. Right. And then we position ourselves again. To. Obey God's word. Right. If you don't know God's word, you cannot obey it. And that's why it's so important to um, to study, to show thyself approved so that you're able to rightly divide the word of God and obey it. Amen. Amen. The next scripture is Psalm uh, 112 and 5. It says, it is well with the man who is gracious and lends. He conducts his affairs with justice, right? And so God desires for us to be the lender. And if we are the lender, we need to make sure that we're doing that graciously and, and with justice, that we are we are handling our business. We are handling our affairs in, an, in, a, in a holy and righteous and just manner. Amen. It says in Exodus 22 and 25, if you lend money to any one of my people who who is poor, you shall not act as a creditor, a professional money lender to him. You shall not charge him interest. Glory to God. If you are positioned to be able to lend, you are blessed and we are blessed to be a blessing. How do we be a blessing when you when you know that there is someone who is poor, who is struggling, who is not as well positioned as you, don't take advantage of that. Don't treat those people as professional, as you being a professional uh, money lender. There are times for that, that people in business are in the business for making money. There are times for that, but you should never take advantage of the disadvantaged. Even, even if they're not, dis well, I was going to say, even if they're not disadvantaged, if they got to be poor because of making poor choices, that's, that's a given, right? They have made, they're poor because they made poor, and that's not funny. I don't know why I just laughed. Please forgive me. But people are poor because they have made poor choices. Okay. And so we should not take advantage of people who are, in, who are disadvantaged. Amen. 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 Next, first John chapter three and 17. But whosoever has the world's goods, adequate resources and sees his brother in need, but has no compassion for him. How does the love of God live in him? How if you don't have compassion for the poor? How does the love of God live in you? That's what the scripture says. First John three seventeen. We have to be honest. We do real talk here, right? That's what we do. And so we have to be honest with ourselves. And sometimes that requires asking hard questions. How are we handling our business? Amen. The next one, Romans 3, 23, it says, for everyone has sinned. We all far short, short of God's glorious standard, right? God's standard is perfection. <laughs> we are all striving for perfection and none of us has reached it. None of us are perfect because we are because we are flawed. Our flesh is, is made in, 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 in we all come from um, Adam and Eve. They they sinned. 
and everything that was produced out of them moving forward, which is every person in humanity is born in sin, right? And so we, none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. We were, we are all striving towards perfection and we need to be mindful of that and not consider ourselves more highly than we ought and, and, and make sure that we do consider ourselves blessed to be a blessing. It's very important how you handle people, how you handle humanity. And if you are a Christian, you sh everything you do it should should be pointing back to God. Should be pointing back. Should 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 be done to glorify God. And so you are an ambassador. You go and you represent God. And how you treat people is a representation of God. You better make sure you treat you're representing God the right way. I encourage you. I should not say you better, but I encourage you to. Treat people because if you don't, we'll be held accountable for that. Amen. 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 The next scripture is Colossians 2:14. It says, having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of legal demands which were in force against us and which were hostile to us, and this certificate he has set aside and completely removed by nailing it to the cross. This is talking about Jesus, and Jesus um paid our debts. Jesus paid our debts. Amen. And so the scripture says what in the definition, forgive our debts as we for, we ask God to forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Jesus forgave our debts. He paid our debts. Right. And so we need to be mindful of that. And that's good news, because knowing that Jesus paid our debts, if we are in debt, if we are not the lender, if we are the borrower, Right. If we if we if we has have sinned and and not obeyed God's word or we just simply did not know God's word regarding debt. The good news is that Jesus paid our debt. And so we can we can we can um, be restored. If we obey God's word, we can be restored. Amen. We can be financially restored. It says in Ecclesiastes five, I'm going to read verses four, five, and six a, it says, when you make a vow or a pledge to God, do not put off paying it for God takes no pleasure in fools who thoughtlessly mock him. Pay what you vow. Somebody say pay, not somebody say, pay what you vow. <laughs> it is better that you should not bow than that you should vow and not pay. Do not allow your speech to cause you to sin, right? You're making a vow. You're saying, I'm going to pay, I'm accepting, I'm becoming a borrower and I'm going to pay it back. The definition said we are legally bound to pay it back. When you borrow something, you have to pay it back, right? And so do not, do not make a vow. Do not uh, accept a, do not become a borrower. Do not become in debt with the expectation of not paying it back. That's a problem. It says you're a fool. It says God takes no pleasure in fools. It says you're a fool, which means you're, you lack wisdom and you also lack honor. It says who, who thoughtlessly mock God. If you mock God, you don't honor him. Amen. And so we need to make sure we honor God with our choices, with our vows. Luke 14 and 28, it says, for which one of you, when he wants to build a watchtower for his guards, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to finish the job? This is this is very, very, very important when it comes to debt, because some debt is needed. Right. And some some if you might need a I shouldn't say some debt is needed because that's not I cannot contradict what the word of God says. We are not to be the borrower. And there's another scripture that comes that comes with that. See how it happens so quickly. It's just we just become so used to what the world tells us. The world tells us that there is some good debt and that's not true. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for correcting me. Hallelujah. We need to sit down and count the cost. Right. So when it, when, when it comes to debt, there's interest applied to that. In most cases here in this world, there's interest to that. And so we need to calculate all this interest in the, it said in Bible days, they count, they added 50% or more per year 
All of this interest that's being added, is it really worth it? Is it really worth it? We need to, we need to consider that. We need to intentionally think things through before we do it. Another thing, becoming, becoming a um, co-signer. You need to think that thing through because if the person you co-sign for does not pay it, guess who's responsible? You are responsible for that. You need to think, you need to carefully think that thing through. You need to know all of the details because you could be in that, could end up with that debt. Glory, 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 Jesus. Psalm 37, 21. It says the wicked borrowers borrows and does not pay back. Somebody say wicked. Everybody say wicked. Why do I keep saying somebody say? Say wicked. The wicked borrows and does not pay back. That's evil. That's sinful. That's not of God. But the righteous, somebody, everybody say righteous. The righteous is gracious and kind and gives. We are blessed to be a blessing, right? And so if, if you if you borrow something from somebody, they're expecting it back. And when you give it back, you, you're acting in righteousness. You're acting in kindness. You're acting... You're, 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 you're not disgracing God, right? And your representation of him. First Corinthians 16 and two. On the first day of every week, each one of you is to put something aside in proportion to his pr prosperity and save it so that no collections will need to be made when I come. So this is talking about uh, preparing to sow a seed to take care of the man of God when he comes. But when you look at it in, 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 as it relates to debt, right? What it's saying is you need to put some money aside. That's why I, when I, this is the verse I was talking about when I said, no good is no debt. No debt is good debt because people will tell you that you good debt is buying a house. Well, not if you can't afford it, then it's not good debt. Save up your money, be intentional and save up your money. Stop trying to live beyond your means. Stop, stop trying to, um, to, to 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 purchase things for the sake of how you look and how you present yourself to others right and save up be intentional set that money aside so that you have it to purchase those big things that, that the world tells you is good debt to purchase that house and to purchase that car right you live within your means stop stop somebody needs to hear this stop trying to live outside of your means live within your means if your means are a two bedroom apartment then live in a two bedroom apartment and save money to buy a two bedroom house if your means are a two bedroom house then live in a two bedroom house until you have the means to purchase the two bedroom house if your means are to purchase a two bedroom house, then live in the two bedroom house until you have the means saved up to purchase a four bedroom house. Live within your means and be intentional and save for what you need. Amen. Matthew six. Um, I'm going to start at verse 30, I believe it says, but if God so clothes the crop, the grass and the feet of the field, which is alive and green today and tomorrow is cut and thrown as fuel into the foreigners, will he not much more clothe you? Will God not much more clothe you? This, see, this is what I'm talking about with the good news, right? Don't. Sometimes we've made poor choices and sometimes we position ourselves for poverty and there's consequences for that, right? Sometimes we are in debt, but the good news is God paid the price. And so that means that you can reposition yourself and get back in line with the will of God for your life regarding finances. That's good news. And until you do, he will make sure that your provisions are met. That what we have to understand and, uh, and be clear on is the difference between provision and desire. I mean, needs and desires. You need protein. That don't need to be a $30 steak. You need shelter. That doesn't need to be that does that 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 doesn't have to be a five bedroom house. You need clothes. Well, they might come from the thrift store. You need shoes. What well, might be shoes that somebody gave you? But God will provide your needs. 
He will provide your needs. Everything that is needed, shelter, water, clothing, those, God will make sure he, he provides those needs for you. What you have to understand is it just, it may, just because it's not what you want doesn't mean that your needs are not provided. And that's where people get caught up. It continues. It says, you of little faith, you of little faith. Therefore, there, verse 31, do not worry or be anxious, perpetually uneasy or distracted, saying, what are we going to eat? If it's oodles and noodles, it's food. Some people have nothing. Or what are we going to drink? If it's water and not Starbucks, huh? Or what are we going to wear? If it's not, if it's, if it's from the thrift store and not name brand, huh? 32, for the pagan Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, but do not worry for your heavenly father knows that you need them. But first and most importantly, say first and most importantly, say first, say most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God. When you, when you put these things first, when you are intentionally seeking after and striving towards being kingdom minded, being righteous and being having the, the character of God, all these things will be given unto you. All of your needs will be met. All of your needs will be met. Hallelujah. Verse 34. So do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Take things day by day. Don't become anxious and overwhelmed worrying about tomorrow. Maximize today. Obey God today. And if you do that, God will take care of tomorrow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Matthew 6, 21. It says, for where your treasure is, there your heart, your wishes, your desires, that on which your life centers will also be. If your if your heart, if you tre I said in the in the in the in the um devotional about finances, if treasure, God should be your treasure. Reverence, the reverential fear of God should be what you treasure. The kingdom of God, the things of God should be what you treasure. And when you treasure those things, you good. That's what your treasure should be. Stop treasuring the things of these world, this world. Be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. Stop loving this world more than you love God. Stop loving things more than you love God. Stop loving people more than you love God. Stop loving that job more than you love God. Hallelujah. For where your treasure is, there your heart, your wishes, your desires, that on which your life centers will also be. So allow your life to center on God. The center of your life should be God. The king on your king of your heart, the king on the throne of your heart should be God. The Lord of your life should be God. Amen. Amen. Our final scripture, 1 Peter 5. I'm going to read um, 6 through, through all the way down to, I don't even know where I'm at. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All the way down to 11. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Set aside self-righteous pride. Some, some people are, some of you listening to this and some people you know have self-righteous pride. And that's why you're in debt. Because you're trying to, you're trying to prove something to somebody else. Your pride might be trying to prove something to yourself. Hallelujah. So that he may exalt you to a place of honor in his service at the appropriate time, casting all your cares, say all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns once and for all, say once and for all on God. For God cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. Say God cares about me. Say God loves me. Right. Verse eight, be sober, well balanced and self-disciplined, be alert and cautious at all times. The enemy of yours, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, 
furiously hungry, seeking someone to devour. When you are not, when, when God is not your treasure, when you lose focus and get distracted, which is the enemy's tactic, you position yourself to be devoured by him, to be consumed, to get to, 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 to not be positioned for what God wants for you. Verse nine, but resist him. Be firm in your faith against his attack, rooted, established, immovable, knowing that the same experience of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters throughout the world. Right? You do not suffer alone. Now, this suffering they are talking about, just for clarity's sake, they are talking about people suffering um, in, for the name of God. But suffering comes in all, all kinds of ways and debt it, it positions you for suffering. Amen. Verse 10, after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who imparts his blessings and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, he, him, um, he himself will, com will himself complete, confirm, strengthen and establish you, making you what you ought to be. When your treasure is God, he will complete you. Stop trying to stop trying to this this marriage is 50 50 stuff is a lie from the pit of hell. You don't need no, no man to complete you. You need God to complete you. You need God to complete you. You need God to confirm you. Find your identity in God. Who God, you are who God says you are, not who this world says you are. Not who your mama said you are if she said something contradictory to God. Not who your daddy said you are if he said something contradictory to who you are. Not who some, not what some man said you are if it is contradictory to who, what God said. Your identity is in God. Read the word of God and find out what he says about you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in his image. You are loved by God. Hallelujah. It, 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 it is God who will strengthen you. It'll God, it is God who will establish you and make you what you ought to be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 11, to him, to God be dominion. To God be power, authority, and sovereignty forever and ever and ever, forever, ever. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We honor you, God. We worship you, God. And we thank you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to go ahead and declare and decree some things. First, declare some things. Speak it. Frame your, frame your life with your word. Declare means to just, just declare simply means to speak, right? To, 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 to verbalize. Amen. And then we're going to declare these things and we're going to align ourselves with position ourselves, align ourselves with the word of God, position ourselves by obedience so that we can have walk, ha we can stand in the authority to give a decree. A decree is an authoritative declaration. It's above and beyond a, de a, de a, de a declare, right? And so we're going to declare it. We're going to speak forth the word, the, 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 um, th this declaration, but then we're going to align ourselves and we're going to come, 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 come into agreement, um, that we're pos in position ourselves to, 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 to exhibit and speak forth with authority. You need to know who you are identity in Christ, we said, so that you can decree some things, so that you can demand some things with authority. Amen. Amen. We decree that we experience debt cancellation and bills being supernaturally paid. We declare that we are debt free in the name of Jesus. We break the power of debt and indebtedness over us and over our family, over our children and over our children's children. We say that we shall not enter into unnecessary debt. We shall count the cost, but we also prophesy that no debt that is beyond our control can come upon our household and get us off track and get us to be anxious. Hallelujah. We declare every demonic spirit that would drive us into debt be bound in the name of Jesus. 
We say that we are prosperous and we are able to live de a debt-free lifestyle. We are able to lend, hallelujah, and not be a borrower. We are able to help, hallelujah. We are able to be blessed and be a blessing hallelujah we 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 will help alleviate uh, alleviate eradicate lack hallelujah and debt for others we will teach them how we will give them the information how we will give them the encouragement to hallelujah we say this day we will be an example for hallelujah we say this day that the debts are are decreasing day by day and canceled supernaturally it, until we are completely out of debt. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand praise in advance. Father, we thank you in advance, oh God, for what you are going to do. We declare it and we decree it and we believe it and we expect it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if you are not tithing and giving your offerings, Abundant Life Ministries is a good place to sow into. That is a principle of God. Hallelujah. So if you are not tithing, if you are not giving offerings, we encourage you to do so here. And then we encourage you to um, seek out a local assembly where you can get rooted and grounded in that is going to teach you the word of God to help you to live an abundant life here on earth. Amen. And then once you have that, then that is where you give your tithes and offering to your tithes go to to keep for the upkeeping of where you are being spiritually fed. Amen. 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 And so we encourage you to be intentional in finding a local assembly where you can get rooted and grounded in what when I when I say rooted and grounded, I mean, get active. Do something to build the kingdom of God. Amen. If you are local <clears throat> in the Beaver County area, we encourage you to join us um, at Abundant Life Ministries. We have service on Sundays at 1130, 2370 Hospital Drive. If you are local, if you're not local and you know someone else who is, send them our way. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you so much. Um, we love you. We honor you, your time. And, um, and we're excited. I'm saying we, I must be saying me and God and Holy Spirit because ain't nobody else here with me. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're excited for what God is going to do in your finances. Amen. Amen. And man, amen. May you continue to be blessed, to be a blessing. I love you so much. My heart's desire is that this content was a blessing to you. If it was, please be a blessing to me by subscribing to this channel hitting the like button if you're already subscribed and sharing this video into your realm of influence either way. I also invite you to join our Facebook group, Woman to Woman with Lady Aisha Fisher. May you continue to be blessed to be a blessing. Love you.